Hey, what's up, Vox and Hops heads? I'm Matt, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops podcast, brought to you by Sound Talent Media, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians to talk about their lives, music, and craft beer. I hope you guys had a glorious weekend. I most certainly did. I was very busy once again recording a bunch of new episodes, excellent guests coming up. I'm so excited about the Vox and Hops alumni that I've been having the chance to have chats with, and I am so stoked to release them. Get ready, I got some excellent episodes coming up this vox and hops episode is presented by heavy montreal heavy montreal is montreal's premier metal promoter when there isn't a global pandemic crippling the music industry they normally put on a bunch of amazing shows here in montreal but not only that they also put on one of north america's sickest metal festivals and trust me when i say this it's the absolute truth i have played just about Every metal festival out there, I've played Wacken, I've played Hellfest, I've even played Loud Park in Japan. And trust me when I say this, that Heavy Montreal is up there with the best of them. I am super stoked to have Heavy Montreal behind the Vox and Hops podcast. On today's episode, I'm with Martin Van Drunen of Asphyx. Get ready, everyone. This is Vox and Hops episode number 224. I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Hey, what's up, everybody? Today I'm with Martin Van Drunen of Asphyx. I am super stoked to be with you. First off, Martin, how are you doing? Thank you very much. Glad to be there as well, Matt. Uh, Well, I'm doing fine, yeah, considering the fact that, uh, you know, we're still in lockdown here in the Netherlands and, uh, well, vaccinations have uh, started. So let's hope that this year will turn out really a lot better than 2020 was. Yeah, that's always where I like to throw people off right at the beginning is how did you cope with 2020? Uh, well, it was a bad one, you know, I mean, put it that way. But fortunately for us, um, yeah, we took the whole situation to our best advantage and, and just <laughs> recorded the album and finished it. Awesome. And um, I'm not sure if we were able to do that. Uh, without the pandemic, because we had so many shows booked and planned, and uh, well, of course they're all uh, you know uh, pulled. <laughs> so um, yeah, so we said okay, you know we might as well uh, do make ourselves useful and um, finally uh, do another album. So yeah, but yeah, sadly enough, you know we had to, yeah we could hardly play live. Yeah. Which is strange. It's strange for an artist to be home for so long. How, how did you? <laughs> cope with the fact that you couldn't get out there and couldn't perform in front of people which is such a cathartic experience for ourselves it's like a withdrawal you know i mean playing live is like my drugs <laughs> so but fortunately like uh you know in the contrary to maybe other continents um because we live close to the german border and it was i think it was in october november where we were allowed in germany to do a couple of um, so-called corona shows really you know, where people Yes, we did three really like um, Corona shows where with a, a minimum amount of people um, and they had to wear their, um, their mouth protection and they had to you know keep a little bit distance. They had to sit down except for one other show where they could stand, but then in like special gathered fences uh, uh, where they could stand like with six together in a group, but that was still allowed to, to, to watch the show standing. So yeah, it's not that bad that we, we say like, or I'm saying that, um, uh, yeah, I had to... I, could, I wasn't able to play for almost a year. No. So our last show, I was like, what, maybe now two months ago. But yeah, if, if, if without that, yeah, I probably would be, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'll be doing. <laughs> you know, the walls, the walls will be cl- probably like they're creeping in on me or something, you know. So it's really, I can't imagine for other ones that, that hadn't do it, that, yeah, they go completely berserk. Crazy, crazy. To talk me through that, uh, I've I've spoken to lots of people. I've uh, hypothetically imagined playing these social distance shows. What was that like, standing and performing extreme music to a group of seated people or people that couldn't move? What was that like? Well, first of all, I mean, we were we were skeptical in the beginning as well. Like, why, well, you know, like an Asphyx live show because we're really, you know, like like raging and and you usually. Yeah, it's like this, 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 you know, this, this natural feedback from with us in the crowd all the time. So yeah, we, we had no no idea what to expect, but we said okay, you know, we have the opportunity to play, uh, fortunately. And the first one actually was in a church, because they had no other kind of venue, and apparently that church was for rent. <laughs> don't really? ask me this. Yeah, that, don't ask me that. So they they had all these seats like in the church, and there was even like a. A quick bar, you know, like um, a movable bar, that so people could get actually during the show they could get beers, but they had to wear their caps while walking, 
And during the show, they were all sitting. But the cool thing was that, uh, yeah, they were basically doing the same as they were doing when they were standing up. They were banging their heads, screaming, <laughs> like throwing their fists and all that. They were completely good. And then afterwards, we got like a standing ovation, which was actually not allowed. But yeah, well, that, afterwards, I haven't heard of anything like infections. They were really... Um, yeah, they were really behaving, and and, they were, and afterwards, the best part was that they were all so bloody grateful, uh, you know, telling us like we were just waiting for a show, you know, we just we we go crazy at home as well, you know, we need we're metalheads, we need we need live music, we we need we need live entertainment from the bands that we like but that we love, so it was really, um, uh, yeah, from that point of view, it was really rewarding for us also, and you could really feel that. Really. I can't wait to stand on stage and to rip into a Cryptopsy set and, and, and watch that crowd, you know, and throw that energy back at myself. And on, on the opposite side, I can't wait to just go watch some of my favorite bands come through Montreal. And, uh -huh. and, and you know, I, I will come out of pit retirement and jump into the mosh pit, I think, because, <laughs> you know, I'm not yeah. going to be able to hold myself back because the energy is just going to be so extreme. And I can't wait for that moment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, you, you know, we're colleagues in that way, so you know exactly what you mean. And for me, uh, yeah, I, I mean, the reason why I'm why I'm doing metal is because I, you know, I need to be on stage. That's, that's just my, um, yeah, that's my my lifelong addiction, really. So, uh, yeah, you know, any other colleague that feels the same as I do, I, you know, you know exactly what we're going through. It's crazy. It's it's a, cra a crazy time. What a time to be alive, Martin. <laughs> exactly. Well, at least, I mean, at least we, we can, yeah, at least we, we can, you know, a little bit now, uh, because, you know, we were, we were, I think we were from a generation that, you know, living in the Western world, that we had nothing to do with really like bad things happening, like war or That's true. Uh, natural catastrophes, catastrophes or something. And now we, at least we can feel a little bit, you know, how, what it's like. Uh, in, in times where it was not as good as it is now. I mean, we're quite spoiled throughout, you know, like, well, the decades after World War II, I think. That's you know? very true. And now maybe, and now maybe we, we, are, we, can, we can realize a little bit that we should really cherish what we have, you know. And be grateful. You're 100% you're right exactly, there. Exactly. And, and be grateful, yes. It's yes. the first time Certainly. that we have to make some self-sacrifices in our whole generation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And everybody's screaming like, uh, screaming blue murder. Like, well, you know, <laughs> come on. I mean, you know, in the end, it's, it's, it's for the good of all of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Vox and Hops is all about hanging out with my metal friends and talking about their lives, music, and craft beer. Do you enjoy beer, Martin? Are you someone that enjoys beer? Oh, yeah. I love beers. Excellent. Do you have a beer on your side right now that you'd like to share with me? Uh, I do have a beer on my side, yes. Excellent. Introduce introduce your beer, and then I will introduce what I'm drinking today. Well, I'm drinking just a really regular Grolsch, because that's uh, that's uh, where the brewery is from. It's here from the area. Yes. And uh, So, yeah, I mean, everybody supports the Grolsch breweries. That's amazing. how it is. Amazing, amazing. On my side, uh, it is a little bit early in the morning. It is 11 a.m. for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, with it being 2021 and we're recording this, I'm trying to find a bit of balance in my life. <laughs> so I am drinking a hop tea. It has still got some hops in it. So it is a sparkling water that has been brewed with black tea and some hops. The hops in this one is Simcoe and Citra hops. I'm going to crack this open. It's super refreshing. There's no alcohol. Uh, no calories, no sugar. It is uh, very cool. It feels like you're drinking a beer, but you're absolutely not drinking beer at the same time. Take me back, uh, Martin, while I'm cracking this open, to your very, very first beer. Do you remember your first beer that you've ever had? Jesus, my first beer that I have. It was, uh, I don't even think it was a real, real serious beer, but it was an uh, alcoholic uh, beverage that was uh, basically made for kids. Really? <laughs> And I remember the name. It, it it was from it was uh, it was uh, it was called Shandy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Which are coming? They're coming back into style now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember that was like a, the, the thing was uh, I think it was it was brewed by Royal Club. You know, they do the tonic and uh, uh, you know that kind of stuff like Sweepers, basically. It's the same same similar kind of um, brand. But it was not really a beer. I mean, I think my first beer. I remember. Yeah, I think it was with my dad. It must have been. Yeah, yeah. It was with my dad during a football match. Yes. Awesome. Yes. I like, you know, it. two men, like really you feel like now I'm a man, you know, now I'm a label. <laughs> I have my football and I'm drinking beer with me dad. <laughs> I know that the Netherlands has a really sick craft beer scene, having spoken to people over there and having toured there. Is that something that you dabble in? Do you enjoy craft beer at all or do you just stick to your classic Grolsch? 
No, no, I, I like all kinds of things. But as me personally, it's strange. What I really prefer on, on all kinds of beer is what they brew in Bavaria. Mm-hmm. And in, in Germany, in Germany, they have a, um, a distinguished difference difference between what they call Pilsner and beer. So, but if you go to Bavaria and you order a, a real, what they call a beer, so a beer, they call that Helles. Yes. Um, which means translated uh, like a light uh, because of the color. But it's it's a bit more sweeter than than um, the Pilsner stuff, and that's something like all kinds of all kinds of Hellas beer. I, I really prefer above anything else. I mean, that's that's really my favorite. And if I if we play in Bavaria, and I open the fridge and I see a beer that's not Hellas, then I go straight to the promoter and say, like, "What the hell is this?" You know, <laughs> I mean, it's a bloody insult, or what is it? You know, I mean, I'm in Bavaria. This is your home country. Provide me with a, a local Hellas beer, and then they're all happy and start running. Oh yeah, sure, Martin. I take the crate out and pulling a new one and then I'm really happy and satisfied and I'll go on stage with a big smile on my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you and uh, I absolutely love love playing Bavaria and getting those huge steins of Hellas brews. Just, just such an experience. Something that uh, it's sort of trickling over into the North American craft beer scene, the appreciation of the classic loggers and I'm excited to see where 2021 brings that. Let's move into your music let's talk about the soundtrack of your youth when you were growing up in your parents or guardians house what music was playing when you were not in control of the radio what music did your parents or guardians listen to uh well my basically there was no one ever at home because my sisters were older but i mean i do remember when i when i grew up and uh my sisters were like about 10 11 years older than i am so even when i was a kid of three years in in 69 or something i was hearing stuff you know that was played on the radio back in those times and actually i was talking to somebody else saying like no matter what kind of style of music it was back in those days may that be country may that be rock and roll may that be soul may that be uh you know the hard rock that was coming out nothing was really bad you know Mm, the quality was good so no matter what song they were playing may that be dolly parton or waylon jack i don't know you know like all kinds of bloody shit but the quality was really good so yeah, I kind of that was what I grew up with when, when the radio was playing, and basically the radio was on all day, you know. And it was like the yeah we called it Hilversum Three, which was the the um, the main countryside um, countrywide like uh, broadcast system because we didn't have any commercial things back wow, then. Wow, cool. You know? Yeah, I mean, and uh, yeah, later there was like a kind of a they called it like a pirate ship, uh, like broadcasting from outside the Dutch waters. Uh, with all with all kinds of popular music, you know, but um, that was not that was not um, that was not on, on our radio. But yeah, I mean, let's say from the period that I will turn like ten or something, you know, that thing was on all day, and, and you know, I, I I heard lots of things. I heard things like Hendrix. I heard The Doors. I heard uh, yeah, you name it, like Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, Rolling Stones, all that kind of stuff, and or, or Chuck Berry or Little Richard, uh, Marvin Gaye. Uh, yeah, it's not really. You know, like I said before, it's not really something that uh, turns you into a metalhead directly, but at least I got I got a good input. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the foundation was very, yeah. very solid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would have been the very first live music show that you went to go watch? Uh, that was Kiss. Yes. Because I was I was back then. I was already a, I was at early age. I was a Kiss fan. And it was before their um, the big breakthrough in Europe, you know, because in, in America, they were already really huge before they had the disco hits, you know, like I was exactly. making you and all yes, that stuff. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but before that, um, I already saw them on TV, like, dude, like, shouted out loud here on some, I don't know what, I don't know what TV program it was, you know, I just saw it and I got like, wow, I got to have this shit, you know, because, <laughs> yeah, this massive show with fire and, and all this stuff. And it was really loud as well. So then I noticed somewhere that they were playing in the Netherlands, and of course I couldn't go alone. So I was just, you know, yelling at me dad, you know, like I want to see a kiss, I want to see a kiss. He goes, oh Jesus Christ, okay, I'll, I'll take the kid. <laughs> and it was it was not even sold out, you know, it was not even sold wow. out. But he was hating it. He was hating it, and uh, yeah. So that was, but that was before. Yeah, that must have been somewhere, somewhere in between Alive Two and and Double Platinum albums or the, or the solo albums or something. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Do you remember? Can you picture yourself back there, watching this show, looking around? Is this something that like is that where you got the bug that you wanted to be on stage one day? No, and, and the strange thing is that 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 never that never happened to me. I, yeah, I, I mean, I was miming Ace. 
<laughs> you know, in, in my room and all that. But uh, there was not this kind of uh, um, conscious uh, awareness of like, I want to do that myself. You know, I, when I was there, it was just an, an, an incredible experience. Like, you know, like you go to a circus because it was basically, yeah, you know, what a kiss show was back in those days, you know. Uh, yeah, it was overwhelming, of course. And afterwards, yes, uh, I did everything to get my hands on to, you know, to 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 at least make a little bit of money, you know, like lawn mowing and for the neighbors or washing cars, you know, you know, how kids are, you know, like, and then they give you like a what, a gilder, which is comparable to like a Canadian dollar. Mm-hmm. So yeah, then, then with that money, you bought like your records and all that, you know. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, at least it gave you the drive, the hustle to 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 explore further. Yes, definitely. You know, definitely. I mean, Kiss was was my first. Uh, well, not you know, uh, to, to back to what I was saying before. But I mean, because yeah, I had a lot of uh, musical input from from what I heard on the radio. But yeah, Kiss was basically it was visual. They made me into you know the really like, heavy kind of music, and from there on, it's it was easy to explore. You know, because in the Netherlands, all of a sudden, ACDC got a hit with Hold On of Rosie, which is a pretty loud song. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, then Van Halen came with Running With The Devil. And, and from there on, you know, the road was basically plastered. You know, OK, so you had Kiss, ACDC, Van Halen. And then you all of a sudden you you do bump into something like uh, an older Priest album or something, yeah. you know, and from there on. Wow. You know, amazing. The rabbit hole. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's do our due diligence and talk a little bit about uh, Necrosaurus. Your new record dropped January 22nd via Century Media. Uh, talk to me about this record. Uh, you've been talking a lot about it, doing a bunch of press. I know what that's like. Um, is there something that you haven't spoken about about this record that you would like to say? Yeah. That's a rough one. No, I think I basically said everything <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> I know what it's I, like. I, I know what it's like. So, <laughs> so I, I think I did about like somewhere between 150 and 200 interviews already. You know, like so. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, Century Media really does a good thing with this. But this was, a, I mean, this is the first one actually after uh, after the New Year and then you know the Christmas break. So we actually we did a fun track, um, which is not on a regular album because. Yeah, you know, it's it's it was it was for a laugh, and Paul came with this kind of um, maiden Halloween kind of riffing thing, and sent it to us, and we go, well, this is not really typical aspects, Paul. You know, it's really melodic, and, he, and I go, well, maybe I should just write some stupid cliche heavy metal lyrics on it. <laughs> so we were recording the thing, and um, I had uh, Husky and Alvin, you know, were um, yeah, you know, I mean, I'd like to have like a one at least one band member extra to you know, to listen uh, critically to my vocals and say like, sometimes like, ah, maybe you can do it that way or maybe you can do it that way, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's kind of an aid. And so um, when they heard me doing the vocals on the fun track, they'd go like roaring for laughter, like, oh God, they set the Tom the like, put an extra microphone on and we, we, we're going to do a chorus. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we were on the ground for laughter after doing the chorus. And then we said to each other, to each other like, you know what? We're going to send this track as an appetizer for Century Media. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, here, for, for all you people to, to hear, you know, this is what the new Asphyx is going to be like, you know, listen to the chorus. We know, like, at festivals, we get, like, 10,000 of people screaming and yelling with us. So, so we sent it to Life, our contact person from Century Media. Hey, yeah, shout out to Life. I love Life. Yeah, exactly. And imagine it, and unfortunately, we didn't have a camera there, you know. I really want... <laughs> comes this really diplomatic answer. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that is, uh, yeah, it's, maybe you should put this and that and that. You're like, oh, it's life. we're just fucking around. You know? That's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I, I, I think I probably told the story one or two times to some certain people, but most of them, they didn't have that, uh, that, uh, yeah, that fun bonus track, you know, which is actually called Death Doom Division because we have it. Uh, yeah, it's somewhere on our merchandise, you know, as a kind of a, yeah, kind of a gimmick. So we call the song because it's Death Doom Division. So we call it Triple D. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome, awesome, and life is awesome. Um, let's talk about being in the studio. Uh, for myself, I don't love being in the studio. I much rather be on a stage when I think or thought about being an extreme vocalist it was never imagining having fun in a studio are you someone that enjoys being in the studio or would you rather be on the stage i prefer to be on stage but right now i'm i'm um 
uh, during time. Now I go to the studio to, to, you know, first of all, I give the best that I have and, uh, and everything I have, but also to enjoy myself. Mm. So, I, so I can, I, I go with, with, um, yeah, this, with, with a strive for perfection, but also with a smile on my face. I love to do it now, you know, but yeah, of course I prefer to go on stage normal, you know, you have more noise, you have, uh, you have, of course the crowd, you know, and all that. And, and yeah, the studio is, uh, yeah, is of course, like, you know, you have to make a record and, and, uh, um, yeah, so it's, it's a complete different, different, uh, different setting, but, uh, yeah, I enjoy myself in the studio. I mean, I mean, we, we make a lot of fun, really. We laugh a lot <laughs> when I go to the studio. It's like, okay, let's do it. You know I mean? Which is good. Yeah. And I will only take like two or two afternoons, you know, for it. That's it. And then I'm over for every album. So good for you. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm not the kind of type that, that. You know, I, I, I've heard from 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 engineers uh, or mixers that, that that they know vocalists who just do every line again and again, and I go fuck that. You know, it's, I do it the way I do it on stage. And fortunately, Tom, our engineer now, he he said to me like, "Well, Martin, I've got this microphone. You can just hold it in your hand." Hell yeah! I go, "What? That's cool." So I can just walk around or stand with the thing in my hand and feel like I'm being on stage. It's way more natural than um, than you stand there and you know. Because that's not the way that you perform on stage. Absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's for me. It's uh, I, I always like to do it. I always at least like I, I want to do like one or two songs in just one take, you know. And I think I succeeded on this album with, yeah, I think probably Molten Back Earth, and uh, yeah, maybe Botox or something. I don't know. That's and then it. I just okay, it's it's fine, you know. Leave it like that. It's one take. That's how I am. Boom. Don't fuck around with it, you know. That's just Jesus. Well, hats off to you. That's amazing. That's that's. I, I've spoken to many, many people, and not everyone says that. So I love to hear that. Yeah, it's you know, that, that's uh, people. A lot of people forget, you know, that, that uh, also when you make metal, it's like you have to have all this this kind of rock and roll life feeling into it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it shouldn't be polished and perfect. Exactly, because you know it's not going to be like that on stage either. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 years this year you've been doing asphyx that is insane i love that could you have ever imagined when you first started that long ago that you'd still be doing it now <laughs> i wouldn't even expect it to be alive still. <laughs> that's what everyone says i love that <laughs> yeah. yeah but for me like i mean yeah I mean, unfortunately, you know, during, during, you know, on the road, I mean, I, I lost already like a, a quite a good friends, a lot of good friends, you know, um, in time, you know, through all the people that, um, yeah, that uh, were not able to, to, to keep up as long as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, first of all, I'm very grateful for that. But no, I, I never, I never expected it. No. And yeah, I'm still, unfortunately, I'm still in good shape and I'm still enjoying it. And yeah, I can still can do it. So, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's I fantastic. was going to ask about that. Uh, how do you keep your voice in check after all these years? Uh, you, you have a unique vocal style, which I love. Um, talk to me about how you keep your voice in check if you do, or if it's just something that comes naturally to you. Both. You know, I mean, first, yeah, it is, it is a natural thing. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed with the throat that I have. And, uh, of course, there have been a couple of changes throughout the years with it. You know, I'm not a boy anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so yeah, sometimes the higher tones, the higher pitched, uh, uh, like hysterical screams are a bit gone, but I can, but on the other hand, I can go lower and you know, with it. So, uh, grunt a bit deeper for my kind of style, but yeah, I, I do keep it in shape, you know, um, I train. So, I mean, not, not in a way of uh, that I run or jog or something because I smoke, <laughs> I smoke a shit lot of cigarettes, you know, I, I keep on smoking. I mean, I'm, I think I'm smoking now for what, for like 45 years or something. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah. So my condition is, uh, yeah, probably not that good. Although we can still do live shows from two or three hours. Wow. Well, t talk, talk me through how you keep your voice in check. I'm, I'm very, very curious about that. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, um, uh, yeah, I, I have the opportunity to, to, you know, I can I can train at home. So what I can do is I, I put the music on really loud, and then I have a kind of um, well, it's from an old pilot helmet, you know, like a, an F-104 Starfighter uh, thing, which doesn't fly anymore, by the way. And holy shit! And it, it has like a ma oxygen mask on it, and um, of course, you know, that mask used to, used to, you have to. Um, Connected on the plane itself, normally to get oxygen. I mean, I'm not getting oxygen here at home, from it, but it, <laughs> it, it mutes it mutes my voice. So the neighbors won't be thinking that um, you're killing someone. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm slaughtering goats or sheep or pigs or whatever in my home. You know? So yeah, I can put the music on very loud and then scream along with it with the mask uh, attached to my face. 
And it's even it's it's tougher even than being on stage with a microphone because it's harder to breathe with the damn thing. So the breathing technique gets better by it because of it. And uh, yeah, I can I can do it whenever I want. Unbelievable! You're 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 like a Roman soldier training, making it harder, <laughs> making it harder for yourself when you're training, and then when you get on stage, it's that much easier because the Romans used to train with with heavier gear. That's amazing. <laughs> Exactly. So it's easy, so it's easier for me to, to, you know, to slit their bellies with my sword. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> uh, let's uh, talk about. Um, uh, let's go back into beer. If you could make an Asfix beer, what beer? A lot of bands are making beers right now. So what beer would you like it to be? What style? And what would you call it? We made two already with Asfix. Did you? Holy shit! Okay, so talk. Let's talk about that, please. We had we had one beer called Death Hammer and we had a beer called the Crusher. That's yeah. amazing. What brewer? What That's, brewery made that? Uh, damn, I forgot. Like, because because Paul was the one that came with the initiative, and then all of a sudden we had two or three crates of it. And yes. uh, yeah, we 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 brought them to 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 shows, and they, of course it was sold out in no time. But the fun part was that I don't know what happened with it, but I think it was uh, there was too many um ah shit. What's it um. What's the word in English? Uh, what makes it rise? The the yeast. Exactly. And th we think there was too much into it. So when you opened the damn bottle, it was like... <laughs> they re-fermented in the bottles. That's probably, yeah. Yes, yes. And so I said to Paul, you know what? I'm going to keep one a couple of months in my, in my fridge at home, and then I will open it. So when finally I thought, okay, now I can open it without any danger. So I went to my balcony, <laughs> opened it there, you know, and then it kept on... Yeah, it kept on foaming. I go, what yeah. the hell? You know, I really hope that uh, that our fans are not going to be angry or, or just keep it on the shelf, you know, just as a thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, there were not. Uh, I didn't like them that much, to be honest. There was too much, um, too much hops in it, and too much taste, taste of that, like you said. But uh, yeah, okay, we gave it a try, and at least we. It was a small dream, you know, that like came true. It sounds like it re-fermented in the bottle, and uh, once that starts happening, it, it was going to foam every time. But a lot of uh, these bands, the fans, won't get upset because they actually just bought the beer because they want to have that bottle. I guess. With, I guess. With the yeah. Axe Fix name on the label. If you could make a beer for yourself, though, a beer that you would enjoy, what yeah. style would that be? Would you go to that classic Hellas? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I, I think... I think uh, because I was helping Husky, our drummer, because they, um, he and him and his girlfriend uh, take over the house of their uh, of her parents, of her parents, in fact. And so I, because he lives a close, clo we live very close to the German border, and he lives close over it, so he's German. Mm -hmm. So he picked me up, and then he says to me, like, oh, quickly, I have to go to, um, yeah, it's like a comparable to a liquor store, but it's almost as big as a factory, you know. And so I, I, I said to Husky, you know what, I go in and ch quickly check what kind of beers they have. So I bought a Helles there. It was like Münchner Helles. And that was so damn good that uh, I go like, damn, one day I'm going to make a big party. And I asked that brewery to deliver as much as they can. <laughs> and then I'm going to get a hammer. So, yeah, that's the kind of that's really the kind of beer that I um, that I preferred of all that I ever had. So I think it's like that if I would brew one myself. Amazing. But it already exists. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah, it's the coolness of having your own with your name on it and they're going to ship crates to your house for free <laughs> yeah. and if the whole world drinks it as much as they do this shit Budweiser well they're going to get stinking rich too there you go <laughs> uh, let's talk about music today you've been doing it for so so long um, what has changed the most since the beginning when you started playing until now first of all the process of recording I think has changed most and the communication so mm -hmm. uh in both ways, so you have the communication with the label and you and me, what are we, what we're doing now? Absolutely. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, back in the days, this phone call would have cost you a fortune. <laughs> now it's free, um, and of course, with the band, um, you don't have to spend like weeks in a studio anymore. That's true. Which is re and that's really something that I really like, you know, because back in the days, you had to rent the studio. Like, let's say, like, okay, we think we can do, you know, and then the record company, you had to pay for that. So they say, okay, uh, you have three weeks to finish your album. Problem, of course, was if you, if you had faced a problem in the studio with the guitar sound or with the drums, with, you know, things were not running the way as smoothly as they were supposed to, then you lost time with the mixing and the mastering process. So you, you know, and nowadays you can just say, okay, uh, 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 I think... 
you do the same with cryptopsy that that uh, uh of course drums and vocals we do that in the regular studio of tom and of course with the guide guitars but the guitar with paul the our guitarist he has a small little studio at his home and is on his attic and the guys can do their guitars there exactly you know? so first of all you save a lot of time you save a lot of money but also you can do the guitar parts and all the stuff whenever you want to do that that is true and you didn't have and and, and that's it may sound a bit um a bit not so old school you know for for a lot of people but for me it's it's a yeah it's really i prefer this way more than uh, than back in the days because as a vocalist you were hanging with the band and, and your job was last so you were like two and a half weeks doing bloody nothing except for drinking and getting hammered <laughs> you know, waiting for your turn you know like. <laughs> and then you see every time there's a problem you see that your time keeps getting smaller and smaller <laughs> <laughs> exactly you're like oh, shit you know i've got only two days left i think that's why i still only need two days because I got used to that in the past. The training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got one, one last question for you. Um, it probably never happens to you because you know what's going on. You know how to pace yourself. But every once in a while, it happens to everyone. Uh, what is your hangover cure? Well, first of all, a shitload of uh, liquid, like water. You know, I, when, I, when I have a serious hangover and I wake up, I always start my days with coffee and cigarettes. But then next to the coffee, I take like one liter of water at least. Excellent. You know, like, like half a gallon. And then um, once that's all inside me, then, um, you know, a soup. And that, that gives me appetite. And then I start like having something with a shitload of protein in it. And yeah, finally, like another nap. And then the hangover <laughs> is gone. Or... The best, actually, of course, is afterwards, like the, what we call like the counter beer. But that I'm not going to do that at home because then you're drunk for two days and you keep on drinking, you know. So I've had that. That they, is they the, slippery, that. the slippery slope of the the hair of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, now, like back in the days on tour, you know, you're you drinking every day and you just woke up and, and the first thing you did it was okay. There's another crate of beer there, so pick up pick pick up one of the balls and you know go to breakfast. But uh, yeah, <laughs> those, they, those days are over. I'm getting too old for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, thank you so, so much for taking the time and talking to me about your life, music, and craft beer. And beer, I love it, I love it. Thank you so much. Everyone go check out Necrosaurus. Drop via Century Media. I'm super stoked about it, and you guys should be too. Cheers, Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. It was a pleasure for me as well. Uh, I say cheers with Mike Rose. Yes, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right to the end. You know that I love and appreciate that. What an absolute legend Martin is. I'm so stoked that I had the chance to chat with him. Unbelievable that he's been doing this for 30 years and he still sounds this good. I was blown away by his fighter helmet. Vocal training, that is absolutely the first time I've ever heard anyone do something like that, and I think it's super cool. You guys should all most definitely go check out Necrosaurus, which just dropped via Century Media. What a banger of an album, and I am all about it. If you enjoyed this Fox and Hops episode, you should subscribe to it on the podcast platform of your choice but not only that you should take the time to rate it and write a review because if you do that more people just like yourself will be able to discover the vox and hops podcast vox and hops is brought to you by sound talent media i have one more episode coming at you this friday but until then remember to enjoy life metal and craft beer cheers vox and hops heads oh,